Welcome back to the Unskilled Mechanic. Today, I'm here in the trunk of the Fury. And we're gonna try to extract the build sheet. Where's the build sheet now? It's in the uh, springs here. I don't Is it like... the build sheet, broadcast sheet, what's it called? Build sheet, right. broadcast sheet, I think it's either or. Broad... Okay, so where's it in the, uh, the Fury? Cause I know, uh, I think this car has two, right? It does have two, we'll show you the other one. Uh, actually, we might have a clip from a video we were filming. Uh, it slid out of the door panel on the driver's the side. The driver's door. So we're kind of surprised because now this car has two broadcast sheets so far. So to get these panel clips out, we uh, just took a panel tool. And this one, what, what material is this? Holy oh. crap. Oh, That's a broadcast like a sheet. Yeah, that looks like a bill sheet. That couldn't have happened at a better time. Holy crap. Um, and we have the other broadcast sheet in the back of the seat. Yeah, and it's in uh, multiple pieces. Trying to extract this might get a little ugly. Well, let's try to take our time and uh, because you have pieces of it, corners of it, of a sheet. I don't know how many sheets are back here because that the one that's there now, is that the one you were trying to pick out before? Uh, it looks like somebody was trying to get to this, but uh, it failed tremendously and then just left the pieces up front in the car, which I collected and put them in a baggie. Uh, and I'd like to get the rest of it out so we can keep it all together and all the paperwork together. I'll show you the binder that we put together. All right, so, so what I'll, I'll try to do is that, once you try to grab it without tearing it even more. Let's see if I can get in here. They aren't kidding when, uh... I mean, we can take the back seat out if we have to. Why, this is more fun. That's okay. <laughs> Full grown so. adult can fit back here. Look at this, I'm in the trunk laying down. Actually, you can fit three of me in here. Actually, okay, so I'll get you an up close view here. I don't know if you can really see that. You might be able to. There's part of the sheet. Uh, we're gonna try to extract it. I don't know what this is here. A tag on the back of the seat here? Yeah, I don't know. You can peel that down if you want. Maybe somebody actually can tell you what that is. Yeah, what that at. is. It's on the upper part of the back seat. Uh, now let's try to extract the sheet as best we can. Don't make fun of my lack of skills here. Oh, it could get out. ugly, and it's seven degrees. All right, let's go. I'll take the gloves off. It's getting serious now. If you're claustrophobic, it's not, not a, a great spot. Okay, I think we got the camera angle as best we're gonna get because we're jammed in the trunk here. So what do you think? What do you think's going on? There's two sheets, or can you tell? So the one we pulled out of the car before in the door panel, or behind the door panel, we didn't even check to see if it was from this car. But we believe it is, because if the, you look, it's really, well, we don't know yet. I mean, how many dual exhaust, big block theories? Oh, we didn't even around? compare the ID to it yet, though. The ID's on it. That's true. Is there an ID on it? Yeah, there's a vehicle identification number, yeah. All right, so we won't check that in this video. So this sheet, I don't know if they doubled up the sheets, it's the sheet to another car, because I know they made mistakes from the factory. So... Let's see what we got here. Let's get it out right to it. Be careful. Try to put pressure on the... Yeah, I'm not ripping it, huh? Uh, no promises. Very brittle. I'm... Okay, there's one. Very brittle, as I just said. Very brittle. You probably see some chunks oh, breaking off. Nice and easy. Isn't that amazing? I love the history part of it. It is that. I mean, just watching them put these sheets in would be interesting too. You just well, I'm just curious push. to see what the difference is between the two. We didn't even notice that two. That was a total surprise. Got focus on there. Excellent. All right, so here it is, the Fury's build sheet. Let's start to decode it. Okay, just a small disclaimer here. This is my first time decoding a build sheet in as a whole here, so. Bear with me, I'm a complete amateur, but I'm looking forward to learning what some of these codes mean. Uh, for the video's sake, I'm not gonna go through every single option here. Pretty sure that would take forever. Uh, so if you're curious, screenshot it here so you can zoom in on all the codes and you can decode it if you'd like. Uh, and feel If you do, feel free to leave that down in the comments. I'd be super happy to see that because some of these codes here, I, I can't quite figure out uh, some might be parts codes where you need the parts manual, which I don't have currently. Uh, in the future, I might 
I might pick a copy up if I can find one. So that would be nice. But for now, let's just go through some of the codes here. Uh, some that I think we should highlight and uh, and look at. So let's start with line one here. Okay, so let's start with line one here. We'll scroll over here to the vehicle identification number. P refers to Plymouth Fury. H is the price class, and this is high. That's what the H stands for. Uh, body type here. 4-1 refers to four-door sedan. So Plymouth Fury, high price class, four-door sedan. So that's what we have so far. Now here's a really important one, engine. Now there are multiple engine options for 1973 Furies. Uh, so this is, this is pretty important for this car, particularly because this one was optioned as a P code. P code stood for the 404 barrel, high performance 400. Now that's key to this car uh, because the car could have been optioned with M code 402 barrel, non high performance. Um, so this one is a high performance 404 barrel as we've been saying in previous videos. So it's, it's great to confirm that here. Uh, year 1973, as we already knew. Now here's the plant. D stands for Belvedere, Illinois. So this car was built at the Belvedere, Illinois plant. So I'll also be plugging some pictures in here and there just to, uh, just to show you what we're referring to here. Okay, so I'm gonna jump around the sheet a little bit. It's probably not gonna be in order since I really don't know what I'm doing. Uh, so bear with me there. Uh, so we're just gonna jump around to, uh, to what catches my eye here. Um, the typical stuff here, trim code, color. Okay, so we're gonna skip over some of this stuff for right now. Let's jump down here to line number eight. Let's get this up and we'll go to this heavy duty fleet section. Now this is what kind of narrows in on this car specifically. Uh, so we have F19, the alternator. Now that's under the heavy duty section. And I believe the one in the car is a 65 amp alternator, which was the, the bigger one. So that's nice to see still intact on the car. Let's move over here to F58, which was, I'm guessing that's cross member reinforcement. Not exactly sure what that is. So if you know in the comments, uh, I'd, I'd definitely be curious to find out. Now here we have F63, engine roll restraint. I'll plug a picture here. Uh, so I, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe these were for your high performance models uh, so the car could handle the torque more without breaking a motor mount. That's my guess. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not entirely sure, but that's my guess. Okay, so here's another really important option here, uh, the certified speedometer. That was another one in question, for me at least, because the car doesn't have the fender tag present right now. I'm not sure if it was lost, damaged, et cetera, whatever happened over the years. Uh, it's just not on the car right now. So we, we didn't know the options before. Of course, we assumed that to be original, but now we can confirm this car was optioned with the certified speedometer. So yeah, that's really cool. This car was optioned with the certified speedometer and uh, some other goodies here. So I'm glad we can finally uh, sit down and confirm this now that we have the build sheet right in front of us. So that's nice to see there. Now let's jump around here and see if there's anything here in line nine. Unfortunately, a lot of the sheet was chewed up or just disintegrated, but most of it is still intact. So we'll take what we can get right now. Since we don't have a fender tag, this sheet's actually, it's, it's saving us right now. Let's see what we got here, line nine. Okay, nothing's really standing out here in line nine. Let's jump around the sheet some more. Moldings, wheel lip moldings. Uh, I think those look great on the car, so I'm happy that was option with the car. Okay, so here we are, line 11, engine accessories. This is one I really wanted to see on here, dual exhaust. So now we know the car was factory option with dual exhaust, which is really nice to see here, knowing that they weren't added on later in the years, what have you. So that was a factory option, which is uh, pretty cool for a C-body, I think. So nice to see that here. Let's move on here. Now, sorry if I don't cover something you wanted to see. I'm just trying to scroll through the sheet here and uh, pick on some highlights. So yes, yeah, sorry if I, I'm missing something that you wanted me to cover. Uh, just for the sake of your sanity and the timing of this video, we'll keep it brief for now. But like I said before, if you are curious about certain options, uh, so yeah, screenshot the sheet, zoom in on what you want to see particularly, 
And uh, let me know what you find. Uh, I'm curious to find out what you guys find because I'm sure I'm missing stuff on here. So uh, let me know down in the comments if you find anything that I missed here. Uh, we'll move down here to remarks. Now this number here in particular is seen somewhere else on the car. It is the, uh, it's on the driver's door. When you remove the door panel, it's there in paint marker. I'll plug a picture in here and uh, see if you can tell me what that means. Because I can't find anything really particular about this number. Uh, so if you do know, feel free to leave that down in the comments. So just to summarize the build sheet here, now we know the car is a factory 400 four barrel, dual exhaust, certified speedometer, etc. Uh, all these other options on here. So now we know the car is 100% factory, which is, which is great. But going in, we kind of knew, or we, we really had a basic understanding that the car was really untouched over the years. But now it's nice. We can confirm it 100%. We have the car's build sheet right here. Matches, the VIN matches. So it's really nice to see, see right in front of us. So this is great news. So now I'd like to dive into the history of the car. Um, I have the original title to the car, so I have the original dealership and who it was bought by. Uh, so let's dig into that a little bit and see if we can figure out where this car came from or maybe some past history on the car. So let's do that now. All right, so now for this portion of the video, I'd like to go into some of the history on the car or at least what we could find. We've also found some documentation. It's maybe a uh, backup a theory here we have of, of where the car originated from and where it ended up etc so let's get into that now and show you what we found so here is the original title for the car uh of course it states the make model all that now the previous owner or where the car was sold was j smith chrysler plymouth in austin texas so that's uh it's cool to see where it came from so that's where the car originated from the the dealership at least so the texas department of public safety purchased the car uh we're guessing late 72 somewhere in that area uh but the title was issued on january 11th 1973 so that's when the title was issued okay so that's what we have here in the title so uh, let's dig a little deeper here okay so here's another document we found by doing a little internet research we're just trying to figure out why the car was ordered by the department of public safety of course i'm sure they were they were buying fleet cars here and there, but uh, just to try and pinpoint this car specifically, uh, it'd be nice to to really confirm our our belief here that the car was used as a fleet car. Uh, so it'd be nice to back that up with some with some evidence. So here we have a document from the City Council of Austin, Texas. According to this, the regular meeting, October nineteenth, nineteen seventy two. So if you recall the date on the title. The title was issued January 11th, 1973. The meeting was October 19th, 1972. So later in 1972. So let's see what this meeting was about here. So scrolling through the document here, this is what really stuck out to us here. So the city of Austin, Texas was replacing six sedans. Now, this part here, J. Smith Chrysler Plymouth in Austin, Texas was selling two of those units out of the six. Now, if you recall on the title, the three was sold new at Jay Smith Chrysler Plymouth in Austin, Texas. Now this meeting was held on October 19th, 1972. So it's in the right time frame. Was the car ordered by the city as a special order fleet car built, what have you, and it puts it right in that time frame. The car was at the dealership and it was titled on January 11th, 1973. Now there is some time there. Who knows how long would, did it take to have these units built? I'm not sure. It's a lot of unanswered questions. So this seems like a plausible theory here as to why the car was ordered, who was ordered by, etc. Okay, so now you've seen where this car possibly originated from and why it was ordered. Uh, I just wanted to come back to the title here. And uh, on the back side of this title, there are some uh, addresses and stuff that I can't show on here but I'll try to describe it to you as best I can. Uh, so this car, after it was done with its service with the Texas Department of Public Safety, uh, the car was sold, I'm guessing at auction. A uh, used car dealer bought it in 1979. And so 
Now the question is, where was the car from 1979 to present day? So uh, I'm going to try to answer that question for you right now. Okay, so here we are on present day Google Earth. And this is where the Fury was brought to in 1979. Uh, this was where the dealership was located that purchased the Fury from the state of Texas. Uh, so this is where the car was, presumably in 1979. So uh, it is it is not owned by the the same dealership chain that bought it. It's uh, now somebody different. But here's the location in the same building, etc. So this is where it was brought to in 1979. Okay, so I just wanted to try and cover where the Fury was from 1979 to present day. So the deceased, Mr. John Haney, purchased a car in 2014. From what we could tell in the title, it was signed over on 2014. The further back that date up, the tires were date coded 2014 as well. So we're thinking that Mr. Haney tried to get the car running in 2014, and, and maybe he ran into the same issue we did with the uh, fuel delivery issue. So maybe he tried to run the car, and it wasn't getting fuel, and then he put it down and just and just gave up on it or just couldn't get to it, what have you. Uh, apparently, this was common for him to do. He would jump around project to project, so it is it is likely that that's what happened. Um, so anyways, he bought it from this used car dealership in 2014, and it pre presumably sat until present day until we picked it up. So that covers where the car was all those years. It was most likely sitting in this lot right here. So I know this story is getting to be a little much. There's a lot to uh, to think about here, but it just keeps getting more interesting the deeper we dig. So if you remember from the city council meeting, the document we showed you there, uh, there was two cars purchased from J. Smith Chrysler, one being possibly our Fury, and then the second one unknown, possibly another Fury. Now, this is the same lot that our Fury was purchased from in 2014 by Mr. Haney. Now, look here as I zoom in. Now, this dealership's in uh, San Angelo, Texas. So it's all within the same state, by the way. Uh, so let me zoom in here. Okay, so now I'm at a different view in the yard here. Uh, this is from 2012. So this is back around the time where uh, our Fury would still be here. It's got to be here somewhere in the yard, but we can't get a, a very good shot. You probably see two Furies in this frame. One on the end, that looks to be like a Fury 3, and the one closest to you, the white Fury 3, the way you can tell it's a Fury 3 is that indent in the bumper where the reverse lights are. That means it's a Fury 3. So this is a Fury 3 with the side molding. It's another base, base Fury, just plain Jane. It's white. Uh, I don't believe there's a passenger side mirror on it. So it's another plain Jane Fury, just like ours. Okay, just to uh, summarize our thoughts here, we have a feeling that uh, our Fury was auctioned off in 79 with its sister car in 79 as well. Those two cars that were at the city council meeting that were bought were possibly auctioned off at the same time. So could it be this white 73 Fury here? Is that the sister car to our Fury? It came from the same yard, same time frame. What are the chances that it's a different car? Maybe since he was a dealer, did he buy all the cars at once to sell and then just never let go of them? Now, another question we have here, where did this Fury end up? If you remember the Mopar Hoard auction, the estate of uh, Mr. John Haney, this car was not a part of the auction. So did he buy this car or did this car end up somewhere else? We're still asking ourselves that question now. So now we need to find this 73 Fury. Is this car still out there somewhere? So I know we brought a lot of questions to the table today. Uh, so let us know down in the comments what you think. Could this be the missing sister car to our Fury? Please like, share, and subscribe, and let us know what you think. See you in the next video.